Today we're going to talk about measuring disease from lesson five. And specifically, we'll talk about incidence, prevalence, and then in a separate video, we'll talk about the death rates. First, we're going to discuss how incidence and prevalence work based on time. That's a very important component of measuring incidence and prevalence. Because we have to use the same language so that everybody knows what we're talking about, we have to know that incidence equals the number of new cases, new cases, over a period of time divided by the population. Now that new cases can be measured by month, week, day, or sometimes even by year. It's that specified period of time for incidence. Prevalence, on the other hand, is the number of cases, regardless of whether they were new, at a given time divided by the population. So, we're going to consider initially that there were 110 cases of disease on January 1st. However, in a chronic condition where there's no um, death and no cure, um, we can follow a, a principle here to assume and calculate new prevalences and incidences along the way. So in January, we're going to assume that there were two new cases. And in February, we're going to say there were 11. And in March, say four. And in April, we'll have seven cases. And in May, that was a bad one, so we'll say there's 20 cases. In June, we'll have one. In July, we'll have one. August, 13. September, um, we'll say that there were 12. October, 6. November, 13. And December, we'll say there were no new cases in December. So if we wanted to calculate incidence for the month of, of June, we would take 1 divided by 3910. And that would give us 1 divided by 39, uh, 3910 gives us 2.56 per 10,000. Now we could calculate that for May with 20 divided by 1310, or 1390 or 7 divided by 3910, excuse me. Or any combination. If we were to take the quarters of, this, of the year, we would take, um, for the first quarter, we would take 2 plus 11 plus 4 for the first quarter. For the second quarter, we'd have 7 plus 20 plus 1 because a quarter of a year is a block of three months. So that's the second quarter of the year. So in that case, we could calculate 28, because 20 plus 7 plus 1 is 28, divided by 3910 equals the incidence for the second quarter. Okay. Now, while incidence is important, we, we may need to consider um, what's happening, how many people have the disease on this particular July 1st. Well, in order to determine that, we have to know how many people, new cases, have the disease at that given time on July 1st. If I take 110 and I add 2, and then I add 11, and then I add 4, and then I add 7, and 20, and 1. I'll get the number here in July, but we'll do it in steps. So in February, 
on February 1st, because there were two new cases that were added to the 110, we have 112 cases of disease. At the beginning of March, we would have 112 plus 11, which is 123. Then for the beginning of April, we have 123 plus 4 is 127, so on and so forth. We go on to 134 in May, 154 at the beginning of June, and 155 at the beginning of July. So the prevalence at July 1 equals 155 divided by 3910. Because our population hasn't changed. We didn't add new people that were sick. We took these 3,910 people and some of them got sick. And that gives us our prevalence. In this case, 155 divided by 3,910 gives us 3.96% or per 100. So that is how incidence and prevalence works. Now, it works a little differently with uh, infectious disease. With infectious disease, we don't have people who will accumulate along the bottom here. We won't have an accumulation because people will get better they'll get s more people will get sick and some people will die so that number instead of being an accumulation will um, increase over time and decrease over time depending on how infectious the disease is how deadly it is and how long it infects people but the principle still remains that we will um, at this point in time we add up all the people in our community that have the disease divide it by the population and that gives us our prevalence. Now I want to go back one one spot here. If if we got to the point where we have um, the prevalence and the numbers of incidents we can work backward. So we're going to ignore these numbers down here at the bottom and I'm going to come up with a different color so that we can we can calculate this. If on December there were 230 cases on December, we can work back to calculate the the prevalence in February. Okay? So the best way to do that would take 230 minus 13 minus 6 minus 12 minus 13 minus 1 minus another 1 for June minus 20 and then minus 7 for April subtract 4 for March and remember these 11 cases occurred in February and we're trying to find out what the prevalence was on the first day of February so we have to subtract them and that leaves us with only 43 cases on that February 1st. Okay, So our calculation then would be 43 divided by 3910 and that's how we would work backwards if we had this December date as the prevalence instead of the January prevalence date. And we would work backwards in the number of new cases of disease. Um, so that's the way we calculate incidence and prevalence.